What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at Songs of Conquest. This is a game that I've been waiting for for a long, long time and so fans of Might and Magic and fans of things like King's Bounty uh, should probably pay attention to this one because it's effectively a revitalization, not necessarily a reskin. That's the first word that came to mind, but I think that's actually a little bit, uh, I think that might be a little bit condescending considering the sheer level of like pixel art and beauty that's inside of this game. Uh, Songs of Conquest is very much a strategy RPG in the vein of might and magic and so for those of you that were into Heroes Hour and were hoping for something that had a little bit higher production values, like something that actually frankly feels kind of AAA, uh, this game is by Lava Potion and it's produced by the same people that made Deep Rock Galactic and so Coffee Stain is the publisher on this one and they've had a pretty good eye over the last couple years for identifying games that are really, really solid. And so anyways, I've spent about an hour and a half with the game. I've cleared out some of the earlier levels, and we're going to check out the early access as it comes out so that you guys can check it out and figure out if it's right for you or not. If after watching this episode you did want to get involved in the early access, you can take a look down below. I'll have a link for you. On top of that, I'll be streaming this game on the day the video goes live. We'll probably be doing a bunch of skirmish modes and just playing around with the systems that I haven't had a chance to fiddle with yet. Uh, but you can find my Twitch link down below as well, just in case you feel like the 30 minutes or so that we're going to be covering the game here in recorded format is not enough. And so anyways, Songs of Conquest. Let's go ahead and dive on in. I'm on the third mission right now, and I'm kind of going into this one a little bit blind. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen in the third mission. The game as of right now has two fully fleshed out campaigns. This one right here is kind of a training wheels campaign, and then I haven't done this one yet. Uh, but this game, d don't be deceived by the colorful nature of this game. Uh, slaps roof of video game. This baby can fit a whole lot of war crimes in it. Uh, the actual narrative is pretty dark. Uh, the Song of Stoutheart is basically the story of Cecilia Stoutheart. She's a baroness, and her land has been taken over by neighboring mercenaries, effectively. And uh, she's kind of a take-no-quarters kind of gal. I'll be honest, take-no-prisoners kind of gal. I'll be honest with you, there's been a lot of situations in the narrative where you're like, Aha, I have defeated you, my great enemy. What should I do with you? And the enemy's like, mercy! And she's like, no, execution. Like, I'm like, man, she's, she's taking back her territory with a serious, grim look on her face. So anyways, let's go ahead and pick up where I left off, and I'll do my best to use mission number three to kind of explain what's going on with the game. In the storyline so far, we have arisen to retake our territory, and we've wiped out two rival mercenary lords so far. And we just found out that the mercenary lords were working in cohesion with the frogmen, who we also executed. Uh, we execute just about everybody. I'm going to be honest with you. This is not a prisoner. This cousin, we ain't in the prisoner taking business out here, okay? Uh, so pretty much everybody that has come across us has been put to the sword, effectively, after they're defeated. Even when you got them dead bang. Uh, let's go ahead and dive on in. Cecilia raced through the woods that border the tender willed to reach the Paradine and the citizens of the western province. The threat of this fey leader's storm spire and their foul creatures had spread from Barkspur in the north, through the area around Thorncliff and now to the peaceful farmlands of Hazel Point and Windshade. But what could have incited the fey to leave the tender wild? Paradine, you look like you've been through hell. How fare the settlements? Where and when did the attack start? Lady Cecilia, I'm relieved that you've come. The trouble started before the attacks. I received reports of a strange blight affecting the verge of the tender wild and went to investigate. I've never seen anything like it. What does this have to do with the fey attacks? I'm still trying to work it out. The land itself is infected, corrupted, and I couldn't find the source. As I was examining the corruption, we were attacked by masses of chittering rats and armed skeletons. We were forced to retreat. But the essence around the creatures is most unusual. Paradine, leave the corruption for now. What about this storm spire in your message? This is not the first time I've heard her name. Where is she? She's everywhere, Cecilia. I received a message for aid at the Windshade, but I'd no sooner arrived than there was a call for aid at Hazel Point. Then a messenger arrived from the Maple Downs. I'm sorry, my lady. I had to send for you. You did the right thing, Paradine. We've encountered the Fae in the Flint Hills and the Undead near Thorncliff. We have to assume that this is an organized action by the Fae. I beg to disagree, Cecilia. I have no evidence that links the undead to the Fae. The evidence is going to have to wait. We need to stop Stormspire quickly and hope that this brings an end to the undead monsters and the corruption. There will be time for your research when our people are safe. Okay, so we've got two separate heroes right now. In general, I have found... So, 
This character is your leader. They are called a mender or like a wielder or something like that. A wielder, that was the word that they used. Effectively, the wielder are the main storyline characters. They level up, they get new skills, they get larger armies, so on and so forth. Uh, their armies are comprised of units, and the units are effectively troop stacks. So right now we've got 25 militia crossbowmen, we've got 10 rangers, and we've got 10 footmen. If we look over here, this guy's got five rangers, and he's got five minstrels with him. Actually, I think I'll probably just have him pass these off to me. It'll make life easier. Uh, we'll keep things nice and organized for right now. I don't know what the max level our character's going to be able to hit inside the confines of... Wait, why can't I have that unit? Gimme. Oh, I guess he has to have one unit in his army. Okay, I learned a new thing today. I was not aware that that was a thing that had to happen. You can move around the map by right-clicking. Uh, it's going to give you kind of your troops' range and whatnot. It's enableable in the options. The game does have a fairly sweet package of options, just in case you were wondering. We've got five minstrels right here. Yeah, we can take some minstrels. Why not? Uh, the UI. We've got our army up here. We've got our spells. The game does have a fairly comprehensive spell book. It's got kind of an interesting magic casting system. So basically, when you're in combat, every single time you attack an enemy with a unit, every unit has a corresponding element like order or like chaos or, you know, creation. And every time you, you use a unit, you basically get a point of this. And then in combat, once you've got enough points, you can cast spells to sort of vary up the combat and swing it in your favor. Over here, it looks like we've got a couple of Skeletors. I'd actually kind of like to sneak around before I fight these guys. That's what I prefer to do. There's a little bit of stone on the ground right there. I'll also take that. As the Stoutheart troops approached the, ha the small hamlet of Hazel Point, the peasants emerged from their huts and cheered. A scout in Loth colors elbows her way to the front. Wielder, Roderick of Loth sends his regards. He would like to meet with you to discuss the yearly tribute from Loth, but Fae and Undead block the path. He awaits you in Oakhaven to the southwest. Thank you. Tell him we shall come to Oakhaven when we are able, and Scout, remind him that Stoutheart will expect the tribute, not just discussion. Okay. So we've got some amber right here. That's going to be one of our resources. All of our resources are listed in the top right, in case you were wondering where that's at. What is this right here? A small settlement of Hazel Point. Oh, this is actually a settlement? This may, in fact, be the smallest settlement that I've ever seen. Uh, what is this right here? A cozy tavern. It gave us plus five movement. That's nice. And then we got 200 gold from right there. So these guys right here are... We don't know how tough they are at the moment. We'd have to get closer. There are some rats over here. We might be able to handle them. I don't know. Let's go ahead and we'll kind of, like, arrange our troops and get ready for glorious battle. And we'll see if we can lay these guys down. Now, this game is fantastically well designed. Uh, it is a gorgeous game. And this is what combat looks like right here. Uh, the game is just absolutely eye-watering when it comes to the presentational visual flair. Let's go ahead and get on in here. And when you attack, the enemy gets a counterattack. And so we're going to try to lock down as many of these dudes as we possibly can. Let's thin out some of their units right there. Thin out some of their units right there. And they should be mostly combat ineffective at this point. Now, the AI in this game does play pretty well, so watch your back. Uh, the AI seems to prioritize attacking targets based on where it can inflict the most casualties. And trust me when I say just that simple variation on the AI means that they attack you very, very viciously. Like, they tend to focus fire. They use all of their abilities on every single turn. Uh, they will try to avoid, so, like, ranged units will try to, like, sneak around in the back lines and get shots off. Melee units are going to try to, like, block down your melee units so that you can't charge through the line and get to their ranged. Uh, the AI plays pretty well in this game, so keep an eye on them because they'll bamboozle you. Now, let's go ahead and grab this wood off the ground real fast and we'll claim the lumber mill. Unfortunately, this settlement right here doesn't really seem to have... Doesn't really seem to have much of... Oh, okay, let me upgrade it then. Yeah, if we upgrade it for 1,000 gold, 5 stone, and 5 wood, we'll get some building sites. I was going to say, I was a little bit vexed by the lack of building sites that were in this place. Doesn't look like we can take it up to level 3 because it's a tier 1, or it's a small settlement. But we do have 3 build spots, and so that's going to give us a little bit of variation on what we can do. Uh, we should build a lumber mill. That should definitely be the first thing that we put down. And then the second thing we put down should be a barracks. Now, putting down the lumber mill, the buildings, they're interdependent on one another. So certain buildings, you can put down the level 1, but you can't upgrade a building to level 2 or level 3 unless you've got another corresponding building that may also need to be level 1 or level 2. 
Uh, the reason that I put down a lumber mill is because in order to upgrade the barracks, you need to have a lumber mill. And trust me, you want to upgrade the barracks. Uh, the tier 1 soldiers, like, they're okay, but, like, they aren't good enough. Like, as you get further on into the mission, I virtually promise you they're going to start throwing the kitchen sink at you. And that's the point at which you're going to start wishing that you had had access to Tier 2 troops. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll go over here and we're going to get this Shrine of Knowledge to level up. There we go. So we just got 1,000 XP. Our XP meter is right there underneath our portrait. Uh, there's another tree down there too. And the tree should give us some XP. So we'll go ahead and take that. Uh, yeah, let's get the tree. Uh, if we give them a thousand gold, basically we're trading a thousand gold for some XP. Oh, never mind, we didn't get XP this time. I feel like last time I did one of these, maybe it's randomized then. Looks like we got plus three offense and plus three defense. Now, every single hero does have equipment. So if you are an equipment junkie, uh, this game does have equipment. It comes in varying grades and with different abilities and things on it. Uh, it'll increase the offense of your units. Basically, any of the stats that your main commander has, they are passed down to your units to make them stronger in kind of like percentage form. Uh, so these guys are an easy threat level. Okay, we'll fight another one over here. The auto-resolve in this game is okay. I've seen worse, and I've seen better. Uh, but the, the auto-resolve seems to work all right. Just don't lean on it for anything that's kind of, like, sketchy. Um, we'll go ahead and move over to here. And I would like for you to... Oh, I should have played his song first. He's got a special ability that raises everybody's defense. Uh, we're going to go ahead and chop those guys up. And the reason being is that I'd like to move these guys forward and start shooting these big, like, Minotaur Goatmen guys with as much damage as I can get on them just to kind of, like, neutralize them. Yeah, I was going to say, because that guy is by far the biggest threat. Every single enemy in this game is animated with attack animations, death animations. You get the cool slow-mo at the end when you finish off the final unit. Like, honestly, you can tell that a lot of care and detail has gone into the design of this game. Like, this is one of those games that somebody cared about. Like, this game belongs to somebody, and that somebody really, really likes it. And really, really likes the Might and Magic formula enough. And honestly, like... The thing is, both King's Bounty and Might and Magic have kind of been falling off lately, like the last five or six years. Like, their last couple titles just haven't rung true as, like, Heroes of Might and Magic 3 did, for example, or Heroes of Might and Magic 4, which I also liked. And so anyways, I'm glad to see that there's indie developers out there that are really kind of taking on the mantle and being like, okay, what can we do with this formula in order to bring it back? Because I actually do think that this is kind of like fertile soil upon which to build games. Uh, let's go ahead and we've got some new boots right here. They give us two movement and two view radius. I'll take it. We can also hand this stuff off to our sub commanders. In case you're wondering, I know you guys are probably upset with me because I'm just like leaving him back here and I'm not really doing anything with him. I should probably actually just have him tap nodes for a little bit. Uh, there is a maximum level that you're able to achieve on any given level and it will tell you when one of your heroes hit that. What I like to do personally is I like to play the main hero until I max her out on each level and then I play the sub commander till I max them out because sometimes the sub commanders come with you to the next level and, and so it can be helpful to kind of get that out of the way. We've got some more riches over here. Let's go ahead and see if we can get our filthy little fingers on them. We got a thousand XP or three ancient amber. It kind of depends if there's an ancient amber mine on this map but I'm going to take the level up. Uh, I can make myself so we've got a couple options on level up here. Basically You've always got the option to, like, take a new skill, upgrade a skill that you already have, or to upgrade your command, which means you get more troop slots. She's kind of, like, really high on troop slots right now, so honestly, I'll probably upgrade my guard skill. That way, we get bumped up to 30% melee resistance on all units. That sounds pretty good. The Cairn has given us some offense and some defense. What can I do with this guy over here? There's a rat, huh? Okay, so the rat's in the way. It might be an okay idea to start... What do I have here? Let me get him moved over to the barracks. Honestly, they're not spawning very quickly, so he actually might just have to chillax in town for a little while. Yeah, seems like we might be using the main hero for a little bit. That's okay. We'll stay on top of our gold supply real fast. I'd like for the units to build up and kind of pool a little bit so that I can put them on her. We also have another building slot over here, and I've kind of got to decide what I want to do with it. Uh, we can do a peasant hut, that produces militia. We can do a tavern, that'll give us minstrels and bards. Uh, we can go with a farm, which just flatly gives us money. And our economy is not super great right now. 
yeah, let's go for the farm. We can always bulldoze this stuff and build something later if we find that we've made like a bad decision and we're not happy. The game is actually pretty loosey-goosey uh, with the amount of resources that it gives you to play around with. We've got one movement right there. Ooh, there's like a plate mail over here. Sweet. Is it good? It gives eight defense. It's one better than the chain mail that I currently have on, so I'm not going to turn up my nose at it. Who doesn't enjoy a, a nice breastplate? There's another level up, apparently. Your troops gain 10 melee offense, or we can get ranged offense. Let's go ranged offense, I guess. Oh, that's actually... Oh, that was on... Okay, there's like a little cliff right there. Uh, this game does come with a full map editor. And so you should expect that the community will more than likely be pumping out custom maps pretty soon. Which honestly, to me, sounds really, really awesome. That's basically endless content for when you finish off the campaigns. I'm hoping the game does really, really well. I'm not sure how many campaigns they're planning on doing. I feel like I saw the developers post on Twitter with the actual amount. I'm gonna... So this... Vet this. Don't trust this coming out of my mouth. But I seem to recall the developers saying that there's two campaigns in the game and there are four campaigns planned. So far, it's taken me about three hours to get to the third mission, just playing around with various systems. And so that should give you an idea. I think the campaign is comprised of like five or six missions. And so it seems like there's going to be a decent depth of content here. Uh, the small settlement of Crow Point is right on the border between Loth and the Barony of Stoutheart. Wielder Cecilia, it's a relief to see you. These are strange and dark times. Indeed it is. Report. It started some weeks ago. There were sounds of fighting and a terrible explosion from in the Tinder Wild. We armed ourselves and kept a close watch. What did you see? The Fae. They appeared in monsters we'd never seen or heard of. Great shambling piles of bones that melded together. We hid behind the walls and have been too afraid to send to Oakhaven for aid. We're on our way to Oakhaven and we will be the reinforcements. For now, you can breathe easy. You're under our protection. Stout heart stands. Okay. Fair enough. I'd like to pick up some more units. A well-defended small settlement. You will need to attack the main building in order to pillage the guard tower. Okay. Let's continue picking up just, like, random stuff around here. I'd really like to have better troop stacks. I'll be honest with you. How much do we have in reserve back here? I can pay 10 wood and 1,500 gold to start pumping out archers, too. Yeah, let's do that. Let's get the archers rocking real quick, and we'll kind of see... What do I have in here right now? So I've got 15 swordsmen, and I've got no archers. Yeah, small settlements don't output units at the rate that I would like at the moment, but we'll deal with it. We've got some defensive magic right there. We've got three stone. We've also got some offensive buffs. Okay, I think I can live with that. The only good stack we have right now is our militia. All of our other stacks are a little bit dubious in my opinion. I'm going to go back and replenish. Okay, so now that we've replenished a little bit, I think we can kind of get stuck in and we can go after some of these fights over here. Let's go ahead and deal with the Skeletors, bound by oath and bound to her. What is your oath? Bound by oath, bound to conquer. Okay. Oh, we've actually got a pretty solid situational advantage here. Okay. Yeah, let's fight it manually. Apparently, we've got the mountain at our back, so that should be really, really nice. I think that's going to make things resolve a little bit more easily. I really like this position that they've put us in. So I think I'm just going to hole up on it like a rat and let them come to me. Like, I just, I see no reason to give up this advantageous position. It is a really, really nice position to be in. In fact, I think there's a pretty solid chance that our range is going to whittle them down before they can even get here. Yeah, there goes the first one right there. Already dead. Uh, what does that do? Plus five defense. We can do that on the next turn once the combat's joined. We're not even, like, officially in a fight. Oh, they're going around the other side. Look at you sneaky little bastards. Okay. Well, let's knock out that stack real quick. You move up over to here. And because we moved, we can't use that special ability. You go ahead and block the path right there so that they can't get to the archers. Hmm. Upsetting. It's okay, though. We were able to use our position to our advantage. And the undead were no match for us. Knocked them down. In fact, I think we probably could have auto-resolved that fight right there just to keep some kind of forward momentum. But I am trying to show off a little bit of the combat. In fact, we'll probably auto-resolve the next easy fight we come across just so you can kind of see what the results for an auto-resolve look like. At this spring, Empress Aurelia welcomed by the people of the Western Province to swear the oath of fealty and be welcome into the bosom of the Empire. Wow, that was a sentence right there. 
That was a sentence that had a lot of baggage. Uh, May her rule be long and peace be everlasting. I'm just talking about in terms of word count. That was a beefy sentence. Okay. Oh, there's some celestial ore right there. Celestial ore tends to be a little bit harder to get your hands on. And in fact, it does look like we can upgrade our barracks. So we should do that because it's going to allow us to make tier two troops, which in my opinion is really going to kind of be the path to stomping our way through the map. And so what you can see right here is if you have the money, I can actually upgrade these to tier two archers now and I can upgrade my footmen to tier two footmen, uh, which are listed right here. I think they're called shields of order. Yeah, so you go from rangers into archers, and you go from footmen into shields of order. And the upgrade is very much worth it. Uh, the upgrade is quite good. I'm going to give it a couple of turns so that maybe I can upgrade... I can't upgrade all of them yet. Well, I'll just keep the archers where they're at then. What's this guy got going on? Let's go ahead and take a look over in this area. The skeletons were different. They wore the tattered remnants of the ancient Aurelian Legion, and the way they stood suggested that they remembered some of their training, bound by oath and bound to her. Noble legionnaires, why have you returned to haunt Arleon? Bound by oath, bound to conquer. But these are the lands you once protected. We have returned for her, bound to conquer. Um, it sounds like they might be tier 2 units, so we're going to let that fight go for a second. I don't want to get too wild and crazy out here and just get myself smoked. Uh, if your main character dies, the mission's over and you gotta load a save. Your secondary guys, they can absolutely die. Uh, but your main guy, you don't want your main guy to die. Your main guy dies and it's time to say bye and then time will fly as you replay back through the level. Uh, foul beings, be gone from this land or you will be destroyed, bound by oath and bound to her. Stormspire, tell me what she wants before I put you back in the grave. Bound by oath, bound to conquer. Okay, uh, these guys are very easy, so we'll quick battle it. And as you can see, we actually made it through flawlessly. The auto-resolve in this game does take a little while longer, but I think that's because it's literally playing the battle in the background. Like, it's not doing, like, a troop comparison. So, like, what a lot of strategy games will do when you auto-resolve is it has, like, point values that are based on the types of troops and the number of them that are there. And then it compares the troop values and then, like, does addition of subtraction and all that kind of stuff, which is why, with auto-resolve, losses tend to be really heavy in some games. In this game, I think it actually plays out the fight with the computer on both sides uh, because sometimes like with big fights that have like 18 20 units involved uh, it takes a while for the auto resolve to calculate and I'm okay with that if it gives like a better result oh yeah we picked up a crossbow that'll give us ranged offense um, if I was running something that was a lot more heavily ranged I guess maybe I could lose three offense right here to equip that mace and then put in the shield and then we'd have crazy defense yeah, sure. Why not? I don't like losing units. Okay, uh, we've already conquered everything down this way. We do need to storm past the gatehouse, I guess, so that we can go get after that celestial ore right there for further upgrades. We have another Skeletor over here. Uh, this is an easy fight, so we'll go ahead and fight it. It's given us the exact same landscape that we got last time. So I think this really shouldn't be that big of a problem, especially considering the fact that we now have Tier 2 units. Like, we should be able to whittle the enemy down pretty good. Uh, I don't think there's a way to delay your turn, as I recall. I think you, like, have to take your turn when you take your turn. Speaking of which, spells that are available, they'll show up over here once you've got the requisite number of points to use them, in case you were wondering. I haven't really had to be altogether that mobile during this Let's Play, or I guess during this preview, so I haven't really worried about it. Let's hit the 30 stack, since that one's the chonkiest. And then we'll bring him over here just to guard. We should still be good for another turn. Basically, I just like to thin out stack numbers real fast. Oh, they're actually trying to fight me from over there. Okay. Thin that stack right there. Basically, like, the goal is to make these guys combat ineffective before they join your line so that their retaliatory strikes and whatnot are not that bad. Uh, yeah, I can take damage from one unit before I move over here. He's not even really doing an amount of damage that you have to pay attention to. You only get one counter per turn, by the way, uh, when the enemy strikes you. I got that 22 right there. I'd like for them to be gone. We'll knock those guys out. We'll knock those guys out. And there goes the fight. And I think we made it through with no losses. I don't think we got to bury anybody after this fight. There's not going to be any awkward situation where we got to explain to somebody that we didn't bring their, their crossbow nephew home. 
All right, level 11. We can get more ranged resistance. That can be really good. There are some ranged units in this game that hit really, really, really hard. Uh, so the one that I'm thinking of is there's like an elite musketeer, like a guy that basically has a blunderbuss, and he can aim on his turn, and it gives him a fat damage buff. And so like every two to three turns, he basically gets to one-shot one of your stacks after aiming. And so like some ranged resistance can really cut off some of that pain and suffering. Then again, we could take another troop stack. We'll go with the ranged resistance real quick because honestly, we're not even using all of our stacks yet right here. There's a little bit of celestial ore over there. I'll probably get after it. The tender wild grew quiet and cold. Every wielder could sense it. Something has arisen. Okay, I'm not in love with that horrifying revelation. There is indeed a celestial ore mine. Very nice. A uh, celestial ore is basically an advanced resource that you need. To upgrade just about everything, the Gathering of Essence strengthens any wielder who approaches it. Oh, cool. That gave us a little bit of magical essence of every flavor and variety. We got strawberry. We got chocolate. We got blueberry. We've got menthol. It's up to you. Oh, what the hell is that thing? The Rumble of Scavenged Bones. I'll probably leave him alone for a minute until I know I can beat him. Uh, general experience with this game so far has taught me that if the fight says medium, what it actually means is you're about to get stomped out in like two turns. A huge being in ancient armor leads this army, bound by oath and bound to her. Undead wielder, maybe we'll get some answers. Wielder, how are you revived from death? Bound by oath, bound to conquer. I cannot allow that. Are there more like you? There is no other like me. I burned the tree mothers. I killed the dragons. I conquered Patrium. You are nothing. He's about to get stole on. We don't even need to run that fight. I can tell you right now that we're going to lose. A little unfortunate. I believe that I may have to go back and deal with that situation. There's another settlement over here, though, too. I'll probably just conquer that real fast. Eh, he can convert my small settlement. I'll go back and get it later. Outside the settlement of Oakhaven stands a familiar wielder, Roderick of Loth, a man whose code of honor is respected by all. Roderick, well met. Your forces have seen action. Do you have the tribute, or has Baron Aldous sent you with excuses? We ran into minor trouble, and I don't have the tribute, but Baron Aldous of Loth, he has sent me off the settlement of Oakhaven and all its income for the next year as compensation. There won't be much income if we don't deal with the faith threat. Tell the Baron I require the forces of Loth to deal with the current threat. I have troubles of my own to attend to. The Barony of Loth is always ready to defend the interests of her allies. Baron Aldous has been alerted to the Faith Threat and is already on his way with a great host to deal with any resistance to a peaceful and prosperous Arleon. Ah, peace and prosperity, like in the days of Empress Aurelia. I long for that as well, but first we have to deal with the Fae. Are you joining me? I must hasten to guide the Baron through the woods, but I would count it an honor to fight alongside you in the conflict to come. Farewell, Cecilia. Safe travels, Roderick. May your essence flow. There we go. So now we have a large settlement, which is way more awesome anyways than that little settlement that we just lost. I'm going to go ahead and put in a peasant hut so that I can start pulling together militia. Unfortunately, I think we just got to wait it out over here. I don't know if he's going to be coming for us, though. If he is coming for us, it's not going to be good. Okay, so he's actually fighting back right now. This is the first time, actually, that the AI has gone out of its way to fight me. Uh, we will also take a lumber mill down here. Don't know what that was. That was kind of terrifying. I'm a scaredzis. My guess is that he's probably coming this way. We should probably, we should probably beef up down here. Uh, let's go ahead and we're going to garrison in a guard tower real quick. If we wanted to take this up to the next level, it looks like we'll get a medium and a large build site. Ideally, what I want to get going is research. Yeah, so we need to build an academy. And if we can get an academy put together, I think that'll solve a lot of our headaches and woes. Uh, let me go ahead and I'll grab whatever units you have available. I don't even care. And then upgrade it all. Yeah, there we go. So we've got the Shield of Order ready to rock. I don't know how tuned up this big undead guy is going to be by the time that he gets here. So the Watchtower does not do what I thought the Watchtower was going to do. 
I thought that the watchtower was going to increase the garrisons we could carry around with us inside of our inventory, but it does not appear to be the case. So let's grab some money down here real fast. What can I pick up here? Some more rangers. Can't hurt. Add them to the stack. Okay, so we've got one buff for battle right there. We've got some huge rats. I'm actually kind of interested in what that guy has going on. Like, what does he have in his troop stack? I need to come over here and conquer this stuff back, but... Oh, he's turned it into... Look, it turned into like an undead place, dude. It's got like spooky five gum lights coming out of the front door. Sweet. I mean, not sweet for the people that live there, but like sweet graphically, you know what I mean? Uh, let's go ahead and we'll hit the waystone over here. I think he comes back in a couple turns. They can be revived at any of your towns or settlement for free if you have room. Yeah, you probably yeah you probably want to revivify him a little bit. Just kind of like bring him back with something. Bring him bring him back. You know, tenuously clinging to life, I suppose. I'll probably go deal with these rats real quick. It says this is an easy fight. Oh, there's upgraded rats in there. There's plague rats. Okay. There we go. We'll manual fight it since there's tier twos inside of here. But I, I am pleased. Like, I've been using the auto-resolve quite a bit when I was playing in my free time, and I never felt like I was cheated. Like, obviously, I felt like the result was not optimal a lot of the time, but, like, why are you auto-resolving, you know what I mean, if you're not willing to accept a couple of losses? Uh, we can kill all 21 of them right there in that stack. I think that's a good idea. I'm going to play his defensive bonus. We're just going to hold this line right here. Oh, really? You killed the whole stack of them. Okay, he's berserking. There we go. Finish him off. All of my troubadours, they, all of my troubadours, they come equipped with a buck knife just in case. It's better to have a knife and not need one than to need a knife and not have one. That's what musicians around here like to say. We didn't get a level up, but we did get a big sexy pile of treasure. I'll probably take the glimmer weave and we'll take the celestial ore. We've got a Talisman of Chaos, but I've run out of movement points. Okay, what does the Talisman of Chaos do? It literally just gives me two points of chaos. Okay. I haven't actually really been doing much spell casting. Maybe I should lean into that and cast some spells and kind of see what happens. If I can upgrade some units over here, that would be optimal. Okay, stacks are looking good. I'd like for them to be combined. I don't know why, but there's always a confirmation when you move your formations around. I haven't been able to figure out exactly why that's a thing, but like when you move units around, there's always like a confirmation. Uh, you definitely want the academy. The academy is where we can start doing research at, which is going to allow us to increase our troop stack sizes, and it's going to allow us to make our troops a little bit better. So not a terrible investment. Uh, what has he captured recently? Has he captured anything important? I actually don't even know if we can take this guy. So let's see here. Threat level, very easy. Okay. Yeah, I'll take that back real quick just for the finances. Let's take it slow going into enemy territory because I don't know exactly what he's going to be loading. I'm also going to save right there real fast just in case he attacks me on this turn. Oh, he's actually, like, wiping out bandits and stuff and, like, playing the game normally. Okay. We'll go ahead and pillage the crypt. And we will try to get this place back on our side. We don't know what we're up against. 50 legionnaires and some specters. Yeah, we'll manual battle. Let's take a look at some of these undead guys and see what they've got going on for them. Is this a ranged unit? I'm kind of curious if that's a ranged unit or not. Eh, we'll probably hang tight. Since they're going to get first strike, we'll go ahead and play a song. Actually, yeah, he's a thick little boy right there. He's got some decent HP on him. I mean, not anymore. I've wrenched it out of his body via my stabbing implements, but you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, where is he going to move to? 
Oh, he just moved up on the Shields of Loyalty. Okay. Crossbowmen have to reload for one turn every time they fire. That's why they're always kind of suboptimal compared to the Longbowmen. We do appear to be quite a bit stronger than these guys, though, so I think we'll be okay. I'm actually... That fight was a little bit more tense than I wanted it to be. Like, we had more losses there than I was expecting. And so I'm actually kind of worried. The fact that they killed four of my shields of... Let's see, raise two buildings per round, gaining some loot from them in the process when there's no buildings left. I mean, he already burned down my buildings, so yeah, start raising. I'm going to kind of go over this way since we know that he's like down and around there because I don't want him to catch me. He's picking up treasures and stuff, but when we kill him, the treasures aren't gone. So if we actually defeat that guy, uh, what will happen is we get all the treasures he's been looting and whatnot. Okay. I have bad news. Uh, he's headed straight for our main settlement. So we kind of got to run him down. Yeah, it looks like he's uh, down here causing all kinds of problems. So we're going to have to deal with that before too long. He did it again, man. He keeps back capping me. What are you doing, bro? Yeah, go ahead and burn that down. Where'd he go? Wasn't he just here? Oh, apparently he's inside my settlement. It's saying that he's a worthy fight. So let's see Let's see how worthy he actually is. I didn't expect him to bat cap me like that. I expected him to kind of like defend that other spot. Alas, no defense was had. Uh, we're going to hang back for a minute. Because we've got the ranged advantage. So there's nothing really pressing us right now. To like get in here and go crazy. We'll run some buffs on everybody. Yeah, go ahead and wipe him out first. We've got first action. So I should be able to pin these guys down with my melees. We do have a number of spells. What can I do? We've got friendly troop gets 10 defense. We need five order, deal eight damage to target troop. We also have quicken, chaos step. Yeah, let's rally everybody. There we go. So now we got a bunch of buffs and stuff too. Uh, I don't feel like that's a really good idea. I'm gonna suggest we keep stacking buffs on our units. Oh, wow. He just took a bunch of attack of opportunities just to get after my other melee. All right. Well, he's reloading, so I can't really do much with you right now. Uh, we do need to get out of this fight about as soon as possible. Yeah, I'm going to focus what I've got. Keep playing songs, my friend. It's your job just to stand there. I feel like we have this, but man, it seems a little sketchy right now. I'm not super sure. Uh, free up those archers so that they can shoot again. These archers move up to here. Really, I just need my melee guys to hold. That's pretty much it. Unfortunate. Okay, lost a unit right there. That's fine. Pin them down. These tier 2 units are always a problem. Oh, wow. He's actually trying to like... Okay. He's a psychopath, bro. There we go. Yeah, that was a worthy fight. I'm not going to lie. That was actually one of the more tense fights that I've ever had. Uh, there's only been, I think, one fight before that that was that close where, like, somewhere around that middle mark, I was like, mm, at halftime, I don't know if we have this in the bag just yet. Uh, it looks like we stole some spoils of war from him, which is great. After the battle, the armor of the undead wielder is examined, but nothing is found within. Whatever animated it is gone. 
Well, at least we got our settlement back, so that's nice. I'm gonna unlock another troop stack, please. Uh, we're not at max level just yet. I feel bad for Paradine. I haven't, like, done anything with him, but my troop generation right now is just utterly miserable. Like, I'm not putting out a whole lot of units at the moment. Uh, I will take a stack of you guys, and then maybe I'll throw the remainder on Paradine. There we go. So, like, at least he's got something, you know? Like, I feel bad. He's getting left out of the, out of the process. Like, the guy just wants to go to war for kingdom and country. Just wants to support his baroness. And we're just not letting it happen. Okay, very nice. Troops are coming back together. We're going to have to give it a little while, but this troop stack should be able to fight most enemies. But yeah, my name is Splattercat. This is Songs of Conquest. Really, the only thing that we didn't get to was taking a look at research. Uh, if you go to the academy... Okay, I don't know why it's doing that. There we go. It opened. Uh, when you go to the academy, basically different academies in different racial backgrounds will have different things going on. And so we can do human research right here. This is going to allow us to increase our troop stack size. Definitely don't ignore this. There will be fights that they put in front of you within the first couple missions that you will not be able to win at the default stack size. Like you have to do research in order to win, basically. Uh, you can research getting more mana points. Uh, you can research getting more taxes. It all costs different resources and whatnot. But honestly, it hasn't been that bad so far. And so anyways, there you go. We've just stacked the hell out of our armies. And as you can see, we can now put 30 or 40 guys in each stack, which is a huge force multiplier. But I haven't really found anything with this game to complain about. The game has peerless pixel art. It's fantastically good looking. It's got all the right things in the right places. The animations, the sound effects. There's cutscenes in between the missions. I cut those out so that you guys wouldn't see them. Just so there wouldn't be spoilers. But there's kind of like these tavern scenes in between every mission. Where like a bard is singing of your... And it actually is like a real song that they recorded in a recording studio. Like on a mandolin and everything. There's like a bard that's just like singing a Witcher style song about the exploits of the Stout Hearts. And so anyways, lots and lots of cool features here in this early access. I dare say that this one's looking like it's in solid shape. So, you know, if you're all done with Heroes Hour and you haven't done anything, you know, you're waiting for more stuff to come out there, uh, it may be time to check out Songs of Conquest because it definitely seems to be drinking from the might and magic well and drinking deeply and drinking effectively. I'll see y'all later. Thank you for stopping on in. That's all I got for you. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, Songs of Conquest. Tomorrow, more than likely something else. Thank you for hanging out with me and giving your, me your attention, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye, everybody.